Hello everyone, this is Bob and Threadbear, and welcome back to Weaving Worlds. So you may have noticed this by now, but I'm trying to cycle each What Can You Do episode between monsters, fantasy races, and science fiction creatures. And today, we're back around to monsters. In previous episodes, I've done vampires, and I've done werewolves, and the third big monster I can think of is zombies. And while you don't typically see zombies used to create their own independent societies, there's still plenty you can do with a horde of them. What is a zombie? The word zombie comes from Haiti, where it refers to a corpse reanimated by black magic or voodoo. Supposedly, the legend of the zombie is based on a real-world practice, but if that practice did exist, it probably didn't reanimate a corpse so much as it forced a living person to obey someone through a combination of drugs and torture. The more popular concept of the zombie, on the other hand, probably got its start from the novel I Am Legend, written by Richard Matheson in 1954. The book is about a virulent disease that infects most of humanity and causes symptoms that resemble vampire traits, and it was also a big inspiration for the 1968 film Night of the Living Dead. Between those two stories, the modern zombie was born, although curiously, neither work uses the word zombie even once. The fans were the first ones to call these undead monsters zombies, and even modern zombie movies often avoid using the word mostly as a nod to this origin. A Humanoid Apocalypse Zombies are animated human corpses, and so for a lot of zombies to exist, a lot of humans have to die. And they have to be recent deaths too, because old human corpses are either skeletons or mummies, and neither of those have quite the same impact as an actively rotting cadaver. Thus, something very bad has to happen to a lot of people all at once if you want your setting to feature a zombie horde and very often, the zombies themselves are part of the problem. The cause of a zombie apocalypse can depend on the setting. In more scientific settings, zombies are the result of a virus or other infection that causes the body to continue moving even after brain death. In more supernatural settings, zombies might be reanimated by a necromancer, or perhaps they're a sign of the literal end of the world as God himself begins Armageddon. Another factor to consider is the scale of the zombie outbreak. How far has it gotten? Does it only affect one town, one island, or one nation? Or has it spread across the globe, or even throughout the universe? And how far has it progressed by the time the story begins? Are people keeping it contained, or are zombies spreading out of control? Does civilization still exist, or has society collapsed? And keep in mind that you can have different answers to these questions on the inside and outside of the affected area. The last thing to figure out is what traits a zombie has. Because the popular version of the zombie is fairly new, the nature of a zombie is fairly standardized. They are dead but animate. They are in the process of decaying, they tend to shamble rather than run because of that decay, and they are completely mindless, aside from a desire to attack and often eat humans. Furthermore, zombies tend to be hard to destroy, and it often takes a lot more effort or precision to kill a zombie than it would to kill an equivalent human. Now, there are, of course, exceptions to all of these rules, but in general, you'll only see one or two exceptions in any given zombie story. Zombies as Social Unrest Zombies, as an allegory for various social ills, is the oldest way of using them. Night of the Living Dead was, at least in one interpretation, about the paranoia of the Red Scare, the fear that your neighborhood, your home, and even your own head were being infiltrated by communists and communist ideology. And it wasn't really about ideology or politics, not for regular Americans who never read the Communist Manifesto, it was about the us-versus-them mentality, the fear that if communists succeeded at whatever it is they were doing, then the rest of us would die or be brainwashed into becoming one of them. And while there were some good old boys out there protecting American freedoms, they seemed to victimize quite a few innocent women and minorities in their hunt for evil communists. Day of the Dead did the same thing for mindless consumerism and the zombie movie revival in the 2000s was largely fueled by the fear of a global pandemic. And you can use zombies to similar ends. 
The requirements are that zombies have to represent something that mostly happens to large groups of humans that causes them to act mindlessly, without any sort of rational thought or intention. There are plenty of other social issues outside of that scope, but those are the best ones to represent with the zombies. Zombies as Rampant Disease During the original zombie fad, there wasn't really any explanation given for why zombies exist. They just started rising from their graves and attacking humans. And while you could get sick from a zombie bite and die and rise again as a new zombie, you could also rise again if you died from an unrelated cause. The problem wasn't that the dead carried an infection, the problem was that the dead wouldn't stay dead. However, this is less true about media from the zombie revival. In Resident Evil, zombies are caused by the T-Virus, and if you have the virus in your system when you die, your corpse will reanimate. In 28 Days Later, the Rage Virus causes people to turn into mindless killers. In The Last of Us, zombies are created by a fungal infection. At this point, unless zombies are explicitly magical in nature, your audience will assume that they're created by a disease. And while you can use a zombie disease to make a social statement about mass panic, quarantine woes, bad decision making, and so on, you can also treat it as a problem that has a solution. In the modern era, we have treatments, vaccines, and cures for a wide variety of diseases. And while we may be ravaged by a zombie plague initially, we would have a good chance of finding a cure for it and thus averting the apocalypse. By focusing on this aspect, you can make your story not just about the hope of survival, but also the hope of creating a better future. Zombies as Necromantic Minions while you could have a zombie horde come about because of an accident or a random mutation, you could also have them be the deliberate creations of a necromancer, a wizard, a plague lord, or perhaps a voodoo priest. That is the original context of the word zombie, after all, and there's a long tradition in fantasy storytelling of people raising armies of the dead to do their bidding. Hell, that's something the heroes do in Lord of the Rings. So that's another direction you can take zombies. They aren't a force of nature, they're an undead army that creates new warriors from the bodies of its foes. As an army, the individual zombies are hard to kill, but if you take down their commanders, they either lose all of their aggression or they deanimate and cease to be a threat. Another option is to have the zombies be few in number, but great in power. The spellcaster only has one or two zombies at their beck and call, but those zombies are almost impossible to stop or destroy. They feel no pain and need none of their organs, and so even blasting their heads off with a shotgun will do nothing to slow them down. Even fire can only burn a zombie down to the skeleton, and the skeleton will continue to attack. Only something that can destroy every part of a human body will stop this kind of zombie. Zombies as Otherworldly Invaders in the Evil Dead series, demons can possess dead bodies and turn them into deadites. Deadites transform their hosts into half-rotted caricatures who use the voices of the dead hosts to taunt the living and then try to drag them into hell. And while a fan of the series might insist that a deadite isn't a zombie, technically neither are John Romero's living dead, so let's not get bogged down in definitions. The point is that Whoever the zombie was, is, and will always be dead, but the body is moving and talking because something else is using it as a puppet. This option moves the focus away from social issues and towards the horror of an invasive other, a malevolent being that can literally get under your skin and take on the appearance of a friend or loved one. It also means that the zombie acts with intelligence, which can add a whole new dimension to a zombie story. Zombies as Intelligent Undead Like I said, intelligent zombies can give you a very different kind of story, especially if they retain the memories and personality they had when they were alive. This sort of perspective and ability to think rationally really pushes a zombie closer to a vampire in its story role, except without all the various strengths and weaknesses vampires have. Smart zombies remain animated after their death, and they may feel a desire to eat other humans, but they generally don't have the vampire's predator-prey relationship because they aren't powerful enough to be a consistently effective predator. 
Instead, what you have is a more tragic figure. A person whose mind is whole, but whose body is slowly decaying, and whose form is repulsive to the average human. Some settings feature both mindless and intelligent zombies, and that adds even more tragedy, since an intelligent zombie might be mistaken for a mindless zombie and shot. Or else an intelligent zombie is rare and lonely, since the only creatures that can stand its presence are incapable of speech. Being a mindless zombie might be a blessing by comparison. Whether the zombies of your setting are truly undead or merely alive and suffering, they're guaranteed to add a touch of horror that only a moving corpse can provide. So whether you're telling an allegory about societal woes or just making an action story with a horde of disposable enemies, zombies can be an effective story element. Thanks for joining me again for today's journey into weaving worlds. Please like, share, and subscribe because that raises my visibility here on YouTube. Check out my other stuff if you have some time. Support me on Patreon if you have some money. And I hope I'll see you again for the next video.